it's extraordinary. This is the biggest story, not this particular story. These 150 frauds that we're documenting is extraordinary. This is a takedown of evolution, of human evolution. Yeah. That there's yeah. so many frauds that were kept secret from us. So I, I'm very excited for, for the theory of creation. It now has legs. Greetings to the brightest audience in the country. This is Real Science Radio. I'm Fred Williams. And I'm Doug McBurney, Bible student, science geek, host of the Weekly Worldview, amateur comedian. Fred, it is great to be back with you talking about real science on Friday. Well, I'd like to welcome back to the show Dr. Carl Werner. So last week we were talking about the frauds that he's uncovered in human evolution. He's uncovered two or three, or maybe it's more than that. Uh, Dr. Carl Werner, let's uh, welcome you back to Real Science Radio. Oh, it's great to be back. And uh, that was a missed fact there. It was 150. We uncovered 150. Oh, 150. <laughs> 150. We only made it through three last week. And uh, just yep. I just want to remind the audience, if you're just tuning in, uh, Dr. Werner is a medical doctor, uh, graduated summa cum laude, so uh, a, a, a brilliant uh, mind. And, and, and been researching and working in the field of uh, evolutionary study for nearly 30 years. And so it's an honor to have you on, Dr. Werner. I'm looking forward to uh, hearing the next fraud that, and folks, these are things that you, obviously we know there are frauds. These are frauds that I was not aware of, and Fred and I are aware of almost all of them all the time. So this is some phenomenal stuff. But before we get yep. to that, Fred, the audience is on the edge of their seat. What is this week's interesting fact of the week? Okay, so the interesting fact of the week, Doug, what mammal can hold its breath underwater the longest? Playtime. The longest. Uh, yeah. Let's see. What mammal? Have to be. Okay, a mammal. Okay. Yeah. Well, that seems really obvious. So I don't want to say the really obvious one because that one's almost always wrong. But uh, uh, it's got to be a whale. Do it again. <laughs> I knew nope. it. I knew it. It was too obvious. <laughs> okay. What was the obvious one? <laughs> <laughs> was that the obvious one? Well, the whale would seem like it would have the biggest capacity, so it seems obvious to me, but then again, okay. uh, maybe we should it's... ask the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want to buzz my guest. <laughs> I would have guessed the seal. I would have guessed the seal. I, I guess the seal or the sea lion. That's really good. That's exactly so right, the elephant seal. Wait a second, wait a second. Now, I, 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 I'm, how, how could it be that a little tiny seal can hold his breath longer than a big whale? The whale's got to have bigger lungs. Do whales have lungs? They must have lungs. Well, yes. this comes from yes, Swim lungs. Guide. Yeah, okay. It comes from the swimguide.org. Now, bonus question really quick. Which non-aquatic animal, land animal, can hold its breath underwater the longest? Now, that one's going to be kind of tough, but you get a bonus if you get this one. I won't buzz you on this. That's, that's, that's a tough one. But if you get it right, you get the applause. The grizzly bear. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably not a bad guess you think of a polar bear. <laughs> but that's not it. I guess it's either the loon or the wood duck. I'm not going to buzz you because that would be rude to my guest, right? <laughs> it's the sloth. The sloth. Believe it or not. So... <laughs> of course, so, the sloth, yeah. of course. That was yeah. my next guess. That was my next guess. Yeah, I told you guys that would be a huge bonus question if you got that one right. So, um, Dr. Werner, you were an emergency room surgeon, and I'm wondering, when it comes to evolution, was, was there any way to revive it? I mean, you've had to revive a lot of patients, and if evolution as a person was in your surgery room, would you have any chance to revive them? If I had evolution dead on the gurney, I would go straight out to the family and say, I'm so sorry, uh, but it's dead. Um, it, it actually had started dying around 50 years ago, but it, at this point, we cannot revive this thing. Uh, everything has 
collapsed in this creature called evolution. And no, there's, there's, I'm sorry, he's gone. He's dead. Yeah. He, <laughs> yep. So doctor, so doctor, I understand the diagnosis. Give us the postmortem. The postmortem, when we opened the cranium, there was 14 <laughs> frauds fell out. And when, we, <laughs> and when we opened the chest cavity, it was incredible. I've never seen anything like it. The heart normally has four chambers, but it looked like a devil with prongs. And, um, <laughs> and in, the, in the abdominal cavity, when we opened the abdominal cavity and sliced open the stomach, small and large intestines, there was nothing but Christians inside. He had been eating Christians for his oh, death. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, that yeah, it's not yeah. just uh, the unbelievers. You know, we're trying to reach the unbelievers and bring about the fullness of the Gentiles, but also Christians that uh, get lured into this belief and sure. into things like yeah. theistic evolution and all these things that you know, question, make people question Genesis. It's all, all of this always seems to boil down to an attack on Genesis. But uh, Dr. Warner, we uh, talked last week again about Nebraska man and these other frauds, but you have so many more to go through. And, um, and Turkana boy was another one. So let's go ahead and get to the next one. Like yeah. maybe highlight your highlights for uh, the frauds that you've uncovered in human evolution. That's it. That's it. List the antidotes one by one. Hold on to your seats for this next story. We interviewed Dr. Don Johansson in 1997 about Lucy. Johansson, his big story about Lucy was that the knee joint looked like a human knee. He did that on his show Nova. He did that in his book. The knee of Lucy is human and therefore it walked upright. Got it. So we went to Paris and interviewed his partner at the dig site when Lucy was found. His name is Yves Copens. It was right before he died, of, probably of COVID. And we interviewed him. Dr. Copens, uh, the knee joint of Lucy, which you guys found, uh, was it ape or human? Now, we know already he's going to say human because we've heard this for 15 years. Um, he said, oh, the knee joint of Lucy, it's ape. What? What? Yeah. He, what? What? Oh no, it's it's ape. It's not human like me. It's an ape me. I was like, what? Okay, so that was a fraudulent statement that Dr. Johansson <laughs> made when he wrote that all analysis of the Lucy knee joint show that it is human like, therefore walked upright. So that was a fraudulent statement because his partner didn't agree. In fact, Johansson gave lectures saying when he did his own analysis to his students. It, it, it showed up in the ape area. So that was the first fraud. Second fraud, he said that Lucy walked upright because in Tanzania, we find this set of footprints in Laetoli, Tanzania, and they look like human footprints, like two people just walked down the beach. And he said in his book, look, the only fossils that are found at Laetoli site were Lucy type fossils, okay? so. What animal could have made the footprints? It had to be Lucy because there was no other animals there besides the Lucy kind. It kind of makes sense. It's a hollow argument, but I, I get where he's yeah. going. So Debbie and I jumped in a plane, flew to Tanzania, met with the national, former national director of the Tanzanian Museum. And um, we said, we'd like to photograph all the fossils that were found at Laetoli, expecting them all to be Lucy types. Okay, they found, pull out the first one, LH1, Laetoli hominid one. It's a Lucy tooth. Laetoli fossil two, it's a Lucy jaw. Laetoli fossil three, it's a Lucy bone. Laetoli fossil four, it goes on and on and on. Okay, when they got to the 18th fossil, and that was Laetoli fossil 18, LH18, I about fell off my seat. You know what he brought out? Laetoli fossil 18 is a human skull. They found oh my goodness. a human skull at Laetoli, and Johansson kept this a secret and told a fraudulent lie. Now, he would have known this because he did a dig yeah. after Mary Leakey, and he knew the catalog up to that point, and he had to add fossils after that fossil. So that was a fraud. Yeah, so before that, before you, 
we know we knew about this human skull. It's not really a fraud. It's just kind of you know wishful thinking. It's reaching for answers. Uh, your speculation, and that that happens a lot. Speculation. But what people don't realize this actually was a fraud because he knew of this human skull. I didn't know about this, Doctor Warder. This is Nobody a, does. just amazing, incredible. They found a human skull, yeah. and he hid that fact. Is that human skull shown in all these museums that show Lucy walking upright? Do they show a, what, her walking next to a human, a fully? No, a like, full? no, that fossil is, I've only seen it on display at Tanzania Museum. No, it's not on display. Yeah, um, yeah, wow, what a so deception. Nobody, nobody puts that together. No one understands that. Yeah, that's incredible. The third fraud that Johansson did was hiding his alteration to the pelvis bone. Johansson found in Lucy a ape-shaped pelvis bone. Ape-shaped pelvises are flat on the side, and it mm -hmm. was obviously, it was, it was ape-shaped. And he altered it and changed it into a round, human-shaped pelvis. And he felt justified changing it from an ape shape to a human shape because he believed that the knee was human, which it wasn't, and that the, um, uh, the, the Laetoli footprints, which was also misleading. Now, if, if that wouldn't be a fraud to, to cut up a, a, a pelvis, a copy of a pelvis, and change it into a human. I would say it's very bad science because you're changing the exact opposite evidence that you want to get to. Yeah. But that wouldn't be fraud. But what is fraud is that he hid the changes that he did to the pelvis. So he, he had this plaster copy of the pelvis and he cut it up three or four times. Then he added plaster. You know, imagine trying to make something flat into round. But when he showed the pelvis in his book and at all the museums, they painted the pelvis to look like natural bone, like that's how it was found coming out of the ground looking like a human. And that mm. is misleading, knowingly misleading. He should have never yeah. painted the areas where they cut the pelvis three or four times and added plaster. That's wrong. That was fraudulent. So more paint, more paint. Did he know Leaky? Are they, are they, did they go to art school together? Yeah, they, they, they were pretty <laughs> creative. They, they won their award for the greatest creativity student in the nation, yes. They were, they were very creative. <laughs> wow. Well, I got a wow. question on that, Dr. Werner. So a lot of creationists, including myself, we've seen, you know, the images. I think it was National Geographic where this uh, paleontologist is using a bone saw because he said Lucy's pelvis was stepped on. And so he's just fixing it. And you see the bone fragments <laughs> shooting up in the air while he's like, <laughs> zzz, zzz. amazing. And is that, the sim is that the same thing or is this actually a different uh, no, that's carrying the same. apart of reading? That's the stuff. No, that's it. And, okay. Yeah, and that showed that was on uh, in search of human origins. It was a Nova show. It's a second show at the twenty ninth oh, right. minute. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. so so he acknowledged that he did that, but then nobody watched that Nova show that sees the pictures and the pelvises that are on display and in his book. Right. They don't know. He didn't mention it in his book that he cut up the pelvis, and so no, it's fraud. Hmm. It, it's totally yeah. misleading your audience. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. So there, there's a, an antidote against Lucy. What's the next recommendation, doctor? What's the next uh, treatment recommendation for this condition? The treatment for <laughs> Lucy? Um, no, no, the next one. We've got Lucy okay, down. Got, got, yeah, Lucy's already Lucy's dead. done. Lucy, Lucy has been purged from the system, I think, yeah. at least uh, for our audience. Okay. Already purged that from the cavity, okay. from the chest cavity. Now, now, I'm going to tell you about the worst movie ever made in Hollywood, and that's called 2001, A Space Odyssey. Please do not watch it just to get even you don't even let your curiosity because it's so bad of a production. But anyway, in the movie 2001, A Space Odyssey, there is an ape man called Australopithecus Prometheus. Mm -hmm. And uh, that ape man was found by Raymond Dart in South Africa. And Raymond Dart made that whole story up about him using bone tools, stone tools, that he hunted in groups, and um, he altered the fossil. He did so many errors. He actually did 35 errors, and you can see the 35 errors in, my, in our video series. I'm not going to go into them. I'm going to show you how I know that they're not just stupid scientist errors, like you were really stupid, 
but you are a fraudulent uh, uh, scientist. You are fraudulent because these, 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 these errors are so crazy that he made, like for example, that eight man from 2001, he made it up from cat bones, bovid bones, which would be like uh, cow bones. Uh, he made it up from dog bones. He made it up from horse toe bones that he thought were eight man collar bones. But here's how we know that this whole thing was fraud. We interviewed his colleague, Dr. Robert Brain, at his home, and he told us a startling revelation that no one's ever heard. He said, now by the time we're doing this interview, Dart is dead, okay? He died, I think, in 82 or something, but Brain says, was recounting his last conversation with Raymond Dart, the, the very bad scientist. And he said this, Dart told me, quote, Brain, never let the truth get in the way of a good story, unquote. Wow. What an admission. <laughs> Boy, these partners of these he guys should have been a yeah. He should have been a salesman. Well, maybe he was. He was a actually. salesman. He was a salesman for <laughs> Darwin's theory, and he would not yeah. let fake ideas uh, prevent him from putting them out as scientific fact. Now, now, Raymond Dart was all over the New York Times, Time Magazine. He was in the American Museum. He, his stuff was, I mean, Smithsonian. His stuff, and he was, oh, he yeah. was a very prominent scientist. And nobody knows that he basically admitted that everything he did was just made up stories. And, and when you look at his yeah. work now, it, in that light, you see it's all BS, you know? Yeah, he, he was a con and, man. And, and he... And Mm hmm. And this was Austro Australopithecus uh, Prometheus. Yes. Australopithecus Prometheus. Yeah. Australopithecus Prometheus. I'm pretty sure that uh, I heard about that uh, around sixth or seventh grade. Yeah. And I wasn't aware that there were all those different bones. I was waiting for you to say there was milk bones in there. <laughs> he had every other kind of bone in there. How do, how did how do they pull this off? How can you pull this off in a peer-reviewed environment of, of science? One way is you don't let ha people have access to your fossils, so they can't come check them out. Second of all is the peer oh, wow. reviews. Peer reviewers want to end up with the final conclusion that evolution is true, so that when they present stuff, you know, they just, yeah, that's pretty good. That's good evidence of evolution. That's the problem. Everybody wants it to be true, you know. Yeah. You know, um, and Dr. Werner, you, you think about this. Uh, why, if evolution is true, why do we have so many examples of them having to push a fraud? You know, exactly. it's not just your current work, your past work. I mean, you know, the fraudulent cases with like uh, building these proto dinosaurs turning into birds, you know, adding scales to birds and feathers to dinosaurs. And you've got great stuff on that on prior material. But you know, if someone were looking at this and watches your series, it should dawn on them that if evolution is true, why go to all this effort to create a fraud? You, you should you have to. to. Yeah. Yeah, wow. you wouldn't need to because there's a billion fossils have been collected. You would have all these intermediates. You'd have all the eight men. You'd have all these, you know, you wouldn't need to just pull out this transition, this transition, trans transition. What they do is... There's no transition, so they have to make them up in whales, make them up in birds to dinosaurs, make them up in humans coming from apes. Yeah, that's a great point. You wouldn't need to if it was true. Yeah. Yeah. And you've had some great interviews with so many of these leading scientists. You know, whale evolution was supposed to be the best evidence for evolution. And you interviewed the one of the whale uh, scient evolution, secular evolutionists. Uh, I can't recall his name. You probably recall Bill it. Gingrich. You, Bill Gingrich. Yeah, Gingrich. Yeah, exactly. And we've got his video. Go to rsr.org slash whale and your interview with him. And he admits that a lot of these things he claimed about the whale just aren't true. Uh, and yet people don't know about this. And if you hadn't have done the research and interviewed these people, people would not know about this. I mean, I didn't know about, you know, Turkana Boy and these other ones you brought up today. Uh, you know, the extra fraud that's no. hidden behind the Lucy, you know, story, the Lucy speculation, all these things. You know, thank thank goodness, thank the Lord, Dr. Werner, that you took the effort to go around the globe and interview these guys and interview their partners and find out, really get to the bottom of this, you know, get to the truth. Oh, that, that, that brings up a question. 
How do you get an audience with these people? Do they not know that you, do they not know where you're coming from? Well, if I told you, I'd have to come to Denver and kill you, but uh, <laughs> no, we form, we form television production companies uh, in the Midwest and in the West. And, you know, my name is Carl Warner, but I also have other parts to my name, you know, so you might not recognize the other parts of my name. Okay, and don't go into too much detail. Don't go into yeah. too much detail. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it was it was always honest, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that, that's so you have to be creative when you're dealing with people who are this deviously creative. Mm -hmm. yeah. I out deviated them. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. What can we can, do? We have time for another one. We have time for one, maybe two more. Absolutely. Okay. Now, I'm going to do the newest one that is the latest, greatest science, uh, eight man, which you probably have never heard of. It's named Tumai, Tumai. And the official name is Sahelanthus tachydensis. It was found by Michel Brunet. He was in Paris. And um, it was on the cover of Nature in 2001. It was on the cover of Time magazine. And Tumai skull is on display at every museum currently that has a human evolution display. It's the latest and greatest. It's kind of like Lucy in the heyday. And we went to interview Michel Brunet in Paris um, recently, and um, it turned out the whole thing was fraud. And it's just, this is hard to believe this. This is hard to believe this. But I was given a clue that something was wrong when Michel Brunet would not allow me to photograph the copies of Tumai that were sitting on his desk. You're not gonna let me photograph them? Why would you not let me photograph? I'm coming to do an interview with you. He would not send me images of the CAT scans of the thing. Why wouldn't you let me share the CAT scans of this fossil? That makes no sense. It raised suspicion and I started to wonder, there, maybe there's something wrong. So we pursued and found his dig site partner his name is Dr. Alan Bouvillon. He's also in France. And Dr. Bouvillon got irritated at Michel Brunet and they had a fight and he was ready to spill the beans when we talked to Bouvillon. Mm -hmm. And there were four frauds with Tumai and they're the most significant fraud you'd ever imagine. One, he moved the frame and magnum, which is the hole on the bottom of the skull, he moved the frame and magnum from a um, ape position into the human position. And you can see that in our video series. Hmm. Number two, Michel Brunet lied, saying that the only bone found near Tumai was the skull. There was no other bones. When in fact, there was a femur, a chimpanzee-like femur right next to the skull. How do I know that? Alan Bouvillon took photographs within an hour of this thing being discovered and then you can see it laying right next to the skull. But Brunet says specifically in a Science Journal article that there were no other bones found. He kept that hidden for 17 years and that finally came out in 2018. The third fraud he, he said was, it's a six million year old fossil. That makes it the oldest ape man ever found, which makes me famous, okay? So <laughs> the... <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm famous now because I found the, the oldest ape man. And how do you know it's six million years old? Because it was found in a rock, he said, in a rock layer. It had to be dug out of the ground. And the rock layer we could date as six million years old. Well, I, okay, I'll go with that. That was a fraud. Alan Bouvillon provided photographs of the skull when found. And it's laying on top of the sand of the Durjab Desert in Chad. It is not in a rock layer. And the problem with being found on top of sand, as according to Dr. Bouvillon, is you can't date something laying on top of the sand. Which rock layer did it come from? How did it get here? You know, was mm -hmm. it because they have river floods periodically in the desert? Was it brought here by one of the floods? Was it brought here by the wind of the Jurab Desert? Was it brought here and a camel knocked it over? Who knows? But <laughs> see, it's not only, it, it was a lie that on our interview with him, he said he dug it, it was dug out of the ground and it was in a rock layer. So 
Huh. Oh, and by the way, all of the skulls that are on display throughout the world of of this fossil, Tumai, are fraudulent, are fake, are wrong. Now, let me say, let's say it again. They're wrong because he won't supply copies of the skull to the museums. So the museums have to make one up. And so they took pictures and the bone clones made up a thing. But he said all these other ones are on display are false reconstructions. So there's so many frauds. This guy is equivalent to Raymond Dart. He really is. He just made mm -hmm. this stuff up. And um, when you see it on our video series, which is very well documented with the graphics, you see the, you see the frame and magnum moving and you see from one shot to the next. And when you see the picture of the femur and compare it to a chimp, it looks just like a chimp femur. And you hear his lies saying that it was found in rock. It, it's, it's extraordinary. This is a biggest story, not this particular story. These 150 frauds that we're documenting is extraordinary. This is a takedown of evolution, of human evolution, yeah. that there's yeah. so many frauds that were kept secret from us. So I, I'm very excited for, for the theory of creation. It now has legs. Oh, absolutely. Well, the stuff that you've uncovered is incredible. You know, I, I remember an old quote by Lord Solly Zuckerman. He was this respected scientist, and he said, there's no science to be found in anthropology, right? And he's so right. And it's not just that. It's you're, what you're revealing to the world and to our audience. It's not just bad science. It's, no. it's legitimately fraud. And you said you don't take that word lightly. But this is overwhelming. These are con men. You know, they're, they're pushing this stuff. It makes them famous with the, you know, to be friends with the world is to be enemies with God. And they love the attention they're getting. And so many of them are just seeking this fame. Uh, with finding the human ancestor. There's so much mm -hmm. money to be made in that and, and you know, worldly fame. Mm -hmm. But so many of these that we weren't aware of were actually resorting to actual fraud, outright mm -hmm. deception. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I uh, know. It's, it's absolutely terrible. And uh, we got to call people out on this and don't let them change the subject. No, the field is mm -hmm. ripe with fraud. Hundred probably hundreds, uh, and if you read my book, there's other people suggest there's 200 more frauds that I haven't disclosed, but there's hundred or hundreds of frauds in just this one field of human evolution. Yeah, and people can get your series and all this stuff, right, if they go to your website, and can you repeat the website for our audience, and we'll show it to our YouTube audience, so if you're listening on the radio and you, you can't, you're in the car and you can't jot down the address quick enough, just go to the website, we'll have it there, and we'll also have it in our YouTube videos. Yep. And, and what's that website, Dr. Werner? The website is thegrandexperiment.com. That's okay. it. Thegrandexperiment.com, so that should be easy enough to remember. And you've got all your materials there, and people can order your books. And not only do you have you know the fantastic books, you've got DVDs that people can watch you know, maybe read a section of the book and then go watch the DVD that covers that. And you've also got teaching guides, right? So if you yep. want to present yep. this in a class or homeschool, it's yep. it's material that really, to me, as we said earlier and on the last show, it's a must have for homeschool students, homeschool parents teaching their kids. And for Christian curriculum, at the, you know, if you're sending your kids to Christian school, you got to have this stuff. You, you've yeah, got to have actually, it in your house. You've got to have it as a coffee, a book on your uh, coffee table to share with friends. This stuff yeah. needs to be known and it, it needs to get out there. Because I, like I think I said last show, people, when you ask them about evolution, they say the fossil record shows evolution. Okay, let's go look at the fossils. Let's look at the eight men. Uh, let's see what we actually see and see if that really is evidence for evolution. But it's not, as you've pointed out, Dr. Werner. It's a huge, yeah. huge, huge evidence for creation. Yep. And I just wanted to point out for the school curriculum, this is very important that all the kids get brought up right. We have four semester science programs starting in either seventh grade or high school, but it'll take you through four semesters, which match up to our four books. And if you want your kid not to fall away when they go off to college, you start them maybe seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade, and go through these four semesters. Make sure they can pass the test so they, they're not just reading it and forgetting it, that they can actually pass these steps, they will be rock solid of why creation works and why evolution doesn't. And 
it's it's important that the schools implement this. The home schools, every, each individual parent, the do all four semesters. Yeah. And I'm I'm saying this out of my heart. I'm I'm not getting rich by doing any of this. Do yeah. this for your Amen. kids. Amen. You know? Amen, brother. Yeah, absolutely. Inoculate your kids so that when they go to museums, when they see stuff on TV, they know what's going on behind the scenes. They act, they actually re- can realize, hey, I'm not getting the whole picture here. Um, I'm not seeing, you know, you're showing me these dinosaurs, but you're not showing me ducks walking alongside them. Uh, you know, the Bible, we can trust is true history. And speaking of the Bible is true history, Dr. Werner, uh, we had Dr. Biddle on a few weeks ago. And, you know, you were a part of that that movie that released to major theaters, right? Uh, that was so fantastic. It gives a really good historical account that we can actually trust Genesis. We can trust what the Bible is teaching. And that video, that movie, provided excellent, excellent evidence for that. The Ark in the Darkness. Yes, and that movie is called The Ark in the Darkness. I actually am in it. So, um, yeah, it, The Ark in the Darkness is a really good movie. Yeah, it was. Yeah, so that was really cool. It was in 950 theaters uh, um, on March 20th and 21st. So, since that's you know, if you miss that, the the movie will be out. I'm sure you can buy that movie on DVD right now. And mm-hmm. on the show summary, we'll provide a link to that also. So I appreciate you, Dr. Werner, for being in that film. It was uh, fun hearing some of the uh, evidences that you provided. There's so many things to look at. From a historical point of view, the actual science that supports the biblical account of the flood, the events that preceded the flood, and the events that uh, were after the flood, such as the Tower of Babel, and you know the genetics that support what happened from since the flood and the spreading of uh, you know the, the confusion of languages and the spreading of populations, and so many things, the soft tissue and dinosaur bones, and it's it was a fantastic movie. Uh, mm-hmm. I was really glad that I was able to see that with, uh, you know, my, uh, my daughter and future son-in-law. Um, and hopefully you got to see it. And again, if you didn't, you got to go out and see that movie. So again, thank you for your appearance in that movie, Dr. Warner. And really for all the stuff you're presenting here, we're pretty much out of time. And I think we got to, what, we got to 100, 150? No, we didn't. We got to like seven or so of the human evolution frauds. And again, you're using the word fraud. Uh, really, you're, it's not, you're not just throwing it out there as rhetoric or hyperbole. These are actual, easily provable frauds in human evolution. Yep. And we still had, even though as fantastic as these were, there's still, you know, 120 I have to do with you sometime. Or the audience can watch the video series and the frauds are enumerated in episodes five, six, seven, and eight. They just go through, okay, here's the first fraud, second fraud, third fraud, fraud. It's, it's fascinating. So Dr. Warner, before we get to at least one more fraud before we close the show, I've got to ask you if, if uh, did, the, did the proclamation from Washington State Governor Don Evans, the proclamation he made in 1970, uh, declaring Bigfoot as Washington State's official monster. Is that on your list of frauds? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I, I have to say it isn't on my official list, but I'm gonna have, I will take that under consideration, yes. I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You'll put it under advisement. Well, you got top well, men working on not, that right now. <laughs> it, it's not like you're looking for material, so let's have one more. <laughs> okay. I'm going to give a, a, a commonly known one, Neanderthal man, and that was actually five frauds. Now, it wasn't a mistake. Yeah. You know, in 1908, the, the Natural History Museum in Paris, Dr. Marcelin Boulle said Neanderthal man looked like a gorilla bent over, hairy, and uh, couldn't straighten his knees. And that was not a mistake because everyone recognized that Neanderthal man is human now, you know, some Many scientists say it's Homo sapiens, but that was not a, a stupid scientist mistake. That was fraud. And here's the frauds he did. First of all, the hint that it was fraud was that the scientists from the Natural History Museum at the Smithsonian traveled three times to Paris by ocean liner to see the Neanderthal skeleton that he had. All three times, I would think it was 1911, 1926, and 1928, all three times he was rebuffed when he got there. No, you can't pick up the bones. See, now that's suspicious. 
But here, really quickly, is the frauds that he did. A, he moved the foramen magnum, the hole on the bottom of the skull, from a human position into the ape position, hiding the fact on his copies that there were bones missing, which would allow him to move the hole for the spinal cord into the ape position. That was discovered, you know, 80 years later, or 70 years later in 1980s as the frame and magnum was moved. Number two, he showed diagrams that the neck bones of Neanderthal that he was working with, the full skeleton from La Chapelle of Saints, that the neck bones were not human looking, but his successor, Dr. Ehrenberg at the Natural History Museum in Paris, found out that that drawing was fraudulent. He altered, this is creative, he didn't alter the ape man, he altered the human skeleton drawings so to make it look different than a human. And that's in my book. Number three, he took an ordinary lower leg bone called the tibia, the big one, and it was a little bit bent back at the top, but humans in Paris today and at that time have similar tibias with a little bent back. It's just a normal variant of a human. But he said, no, this proves that Neanderthal couldn't straighten his knees like apes. Even though he had seen these bones from modern Frenchmen with the pushback tibia. Uh, so he was creating an ape man. He wouldn't let other scientists see what he had. And it was fraudulent portrayal of a story that I was taught, I, you know, by when I was a kid, 1970, it was still true that Neanderthal was an ape man. It was really mm -hmm. disproved in the 50s, but we, we were still taught it in the 70s. So there's another four frauds, whatever, you know, they, they just, yeah. they're everywhere. Wow. Yeah. Again, think of the number of people throughout, the, you know, the last century that have been tricked into believing evolution based on frauds, not just speculation or wild ideas about evolution, but actual fraud and actually hiding evidence that they're finding in the fossil record. So hiding, hiding um, evidence, changing fossils, changing diagrams, altering diagrams. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Amen. And this is why, you know, God is merciful. He knows that, uh, he knows that the devil and his minions have been uh, working a number on us. And so he's merciful. And if you want to know the truth, you can start at thegrandexperiment.com and you can end in Genesis and you can go to the New Testament and find out that God sent his own son, Jesus Christ, to die and to pay the price for your sins so that you can have eternal life. Amen. Thank you, yeah. Dr. Warner. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Thank Warner. You so, me. yeah, so again, the, your website is thegrandexperiment.com. And you can get all the materials that Dr. Warner has talked about there. That's probably the easiest place to get it. I mean, I, I'd love for you to also go to our store if you want, but I'd, it's easier for you to go to Dr. Warner's site. Uh, we Again, we carry it in our store because uh, it's it's really critical information, and we're picky about what we have in our store. So, And also, Dr. Warner, we will be uh, promoting your material. Doug and I are going to be at the Texas Homeschool convention in Dallas where uh, Tim Tebow is a, yeah. a keynote speaker. That'll be a lot of fun and we'll get to um, interact with a lot of the homeschool parents and we will definitely be uh, encouraging them that this is an absolute must have for your kids to inoculate them because this is uh, the, the amount of fraud is just mind blowing. I mean, even for us seasoned creationists like Doug and I that have heard a lot through the years, but there's a lot of new material, a lot of new frauds that you pointed out on this show. And again, if, if evolution is true, they wouldn't have to resort to this stuff. So again, tons of thanks. Again, I thank you also for being in the movie that was recently released, um, The Ark in the, in the Darkness. And we'll also provide a link to that that provides a really good historical account of Genesis, uh, the flood event before the, before the flood event, the flood and the events that occurred after. So. Again, God bless your work, Dr. Werner. Greatly appreciated. Thank you, man. So, so appreciate your ministry because I live under a rock. I, I don't know anybody because I'm doing these interviews. I, I, I'm not on social media. I have no connection to the world. And so thank goodness. I'm serious, Doug. Thank goodness for Real Science Radio and you guys because without you, I'd be dead. This whole thing would have just died in my bedroom, you know? So uh, I... Yeah. This is going to take a group effort to get this out. And you, you guys are a big piece of this. 
Well, yeah. we'll, we'll be recommending it strongly. Doctor's orders, the grand experiment. That's right. Com. <laughs> That's right. So, okay. So for Dr. Carl Werner and my co-host Doug McBurney, I'm Fred Williams of Real Science Radio. May God bless you.